In this video, we're going to talk all about constructors in Java. We'll go over what they are and what they're used for, how to use them, and how you can create different types of them with some concrete examples. My name is John. I'm a lead Java software engineer, and I love sharing what I've learned in a clear, understandable way. So if you like this video, please consider subscribing so you don't miss each new Java tutorial. I also have a full Java course available in the link down in the description if you're interested. OK, so what exactly is a constructor and what is it used for? All a constructor is is a very special type of method that is used to create new objects. Let's say we have a basic class like this dog class here. This dog class serves as a kind of a blueprint for what a dog looks like. But if we want to create any actual dog objects, we have to use constructors to do that. You've probably created Java objects in your programs before just by doing something like dog my dog equals new dog. Well, when you see this new keyword followed by the class name itself, in this case dog, and an open and close parentheses, this is actually calling a dog constructor method to create a new dog object. But over in my dog class, you'll see that I don't have any methods at all. I have two fields, a string name and an int age, but I'm still able to use this dog constructor method to create a new dog object. So how is that? Well, when you have a class like this dog, Java kind of assumes that you're going to want to create objects of this class. So without you having to do anything at all, Java creates a default constructor for you. Now, the default constructor doesn't take any arguments at all. That's why this open and close parentheses is just empty. And you'll probably hear people calling it something like the default no args constructor. This is what they're talking about. All it does is gives me a brand new dog object that's essentially empty. So each dog object will have a name and an age. But if I go back here and take my my dog object and print out my dog dot name, it prints out null. And that's because this default constructor doesn't set any of the fields on this object. But what if I want to be able to set these values when I create a dog, right? I can't do that with a default constructor. If I want to do that, I can create my own custom constructor. It's pretty similar to other methods, but there are some small differences. It looks like this public dog open and close parentheses and open and close curly braces. So you can see it looks a whole lot like any other method. But for a constructor method, the name of the method will always be exactly the class name. So here it's dog. It also won't have any return type here like int or string or not even void. It won't have any return type at all in a constructor. So what we've just made here is what Java had already given us as its default no args constructor. It takes no arguments and essentially just gives us a new empty dog object. But here in this constructor method body, I can set the name of this new dog object that's being created. So for example, I can take name and set it to Kramer. So now if I go back and call this same constructor method and I run my program, my dog's name is Kramer. But it's kind of lame to have a dog constructor method that always sets the name to exactly the same thing, right? You want to be able to customize that name for each individual dog object that you make. To do that, we'll want to add a parameter to this constructor method. So what we can do is take in a string name parameter, then you can set this name field with the name variable that's passed in. But here's the thing, though. So if you take name and set it to name, so there's something wrong with this, right? The parameter here is called name, but the field on our object is also called name. Right now, when we just put name, Java assumes that we mean this name parameter that's being passed into the method. To solve that, we can tell Java that we mean the name field on this dog object by using the this keyword. Now, the this keyword is probably a whole other topic for another future video. For now, all you need to know is that you need to use this dot name when you want to refer to the field on the object. So that'll take this name field and assign it the value of the name being passed into the method. So now back here, we can pass in the name as a parameter to our dog constructor. Let's call it Jerry and run our program and we can see that we have a dog named Jerry. Now you aren't limited to just one constructor. If you want, you can have multiple constructors. The only requirement is they have to have different types of parameters. So if I just take this method and copy it, even if I change the name of this string variable to something else, Eclipse still gives me an error because I have two different structures that both take a string as its parameter. But you're totally allowed to have multiple constructors if they have different parameter types. So if instead this took in an int age, then we can set this dot age equal to age. This is no problem at all. So now we can pass in an int, an age. So I can pass in four. And then if I want to print out my dog's age, I get four. You can also create constructors that take more than one parameter. So instead of having separate constructors where one sets the name and one sets the age, you can instead make a brand new constructor that takes in the string name and the int age. We set this dot age equals age, this dot name 
equals name. If we want to use this constructor, we just need to pass in a name and an age. So for the name, let's give it uh, George33. We can print out the name and my dog.age. And there we go, we've created George the 33 year old dog. And of course, you're not just limited to two parameters. Like any other Java method, you can create constructors that take as many parameters as you want. There are a couple of more very important things to know, so don't bail on me yet. One thing is that notice, if we go back and take out sending these parameters and just try and use the default no args constructor, now we get an error that says the constructor dog with no parameters is undefined. But it should be using the default constructor that Java gives us for free, right? So what gives? Well, yes, remember, if we don't provide any constructor at all, Java will provide this default no args constructor for free. But if we specify any constructor at all ourselves, Java will not provide that default no args constructor. If we've added our own custom constructors and we still want that no args constructor, we need to include it ourselves. Of course, that's not hard to do. We had it before. It's just public dog, open and close parentheses, open and close curly braces. Another thing is, what about situations where you actually don't want any constructor for your class at all? For example, maybe you have a class like this. Uh, I have a constants class. Since all these fields are static, I can use any of these constants in this file without having to create any objects. So over here, I can just say, you know, constants dot my name. I didn't need to create a constants object to get this variable. Since I never need to create any new objects of this class, it kind of makes no sense to have any constructors at all. But right now I can still say constants my constants equals new constants. Java is still giving me this default constructor. So what can you do to prevent people from creating new constants objects? So what you actually do is go into your class and go ahead and create that no args constructor manually yourself. So public constants, open and close parentheses, and open and close curly braces like before. But instead of making it public like we did for all our other constructors, change this to private. Now we know that private methods can only be called from within that class, right? So now if you try to call this constructor from anywhere else, like over here in our main method, we now see that we get an error. This constructor is not visible because it's private. But you can still go ahead and use all of its static fields just fine with no problems. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, please let me know by leaving a like and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss each new Java tutorial. And if you really want to help and support the channel, you can do the fabulous YouTube trifecta of leaving a like, a comment, and hitting the subscribe button. I hope this video helped you out, and if it did, I really appreciate your support. I'll see you next time.